Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Get Technical. My name is Neil Hamilton. With me, as always, is producer Aaron Bree. Um, today, we're going to talk about cryptocurrencies and the big top that Bitcoin has hit. Um, so I think the theme of the day should be reversals and how to recognize them. So that's your tops and your bottoms. Um, when the uptrend becomes a downtrend and vice versa and how to recognize it. Um, so I'll go into that a little bit and then we're going to raid power hour. Um, uh, well, actually, Aaron's going to raid power hour um, and we're going to watch him do it and see how it works. Um, so <clears throat> there are a few different reversal types that you really want to watch out for that you can kind of see coming ahead of time. The most common that you're going to see is going to be a rounded top. A rounded top is what it sounds like. Price is on an uptrend and it's doing its thing where it has a zigzag pattern. So you have impulses and pullbacks, impulses and pullbacks. But then you start to notice that those, those, those highs or those impulses are smaller in magnitude than they previously were. And then they start to kind of line up like there's a price that they just can't get past. When you start to see your uptrend start to turn sideways, a lot of times that could be something that looks like a bull flag, right? When we see this type of structure, we say entry. However, if it's really starting to look like it's forming more of an arc, and then you get past that sort of middle point on your arc, which is like right about here, and you start to go down, that's when you really start having to uh, to assess your position, especially if you're really long. Um, in this case, we're talking about Bitcoin. This is the same case with any stock, any asset. Remember, all assets, as long as there is a market of people that are buying and selling, behave the same on uh, when they're plotted um, with price over time. Um, so technical analysis works the same way across all asset classes. Um, so in this case, if you're hodling, um, it might be time to consider your position. Um, maybe, maybe um, protect yourself by taking a little bit out um, and then waiting for this rounding top to resolve. So at any rate, um, we've got a classic rounding top here on Bitcoin. It has pretty much fully resolved already. So that's my, my good news for you. Um, now, the question is that if we're whether or not, <laughs> excuse me, um, this wick, which you should be able to see, let me go ahead and go full screen here. Whether this wick um, is going to be enough to satisfy uh, all of our bears and uh, I mean, really satisfy our bulls that they come in and buy. Um, so, right now, just discussing the rounding top, we saw something similar recently um, in 2021 um, from QQQ. Um, the NASDAQ ETF, um, and it was the sign that the correction was coming. Uh, it was not, however, a rounding top. It was a different type of reversal. It was a different type of top in general. Um, it was a head and shoulders, um, and we can look at that in a minute. Um, but first, I just want to drive drive home Bitcoin and show you how you can... Rec I've shown you now how you can recognize it coming, um, and now I want to show you how you can target its, uh, its bottom, all right? So when we're looking at Bitcoin here, we've got all the hallmark signs of a rounding top. The next thing that you want to do once you have that rounding top structure identified is identify the neckline. So the neckline is going to be the point of key support that the asset is hitting um, uh, as it rounds. Now, normally that's going to be uh, a couple of swing lows. in your chart so you're looking for these like key swing lows that kind of hit the same level now in the case of of bitcoin there are two that i would go with <coughs> excuse me the less aggressive one sort of the the optimist uh, uh approach would be whoops excuse me actually accidentally drew a line would be something like this We've got some some meat of the trading. We've got some resistance here, and we've got this point met a couple times, um, maybe even a little bit lower like this. 
Um, and so let's test that out. Let's see if that lines up with any previous support line. So as you know, with any reversal, we're always taking the depth. So in this case, it's kind of, kind of the height. So it's the highest point in our rounding top um, down to our neckline. And then we're adding that distance to our neckline. And we can see where that lines up right with this previous level of support. Um, so if you're looking at Bitcoin or any other rounding top, um, this is just an example that happens to be going on right now. Um, that's kind of how you want to find your bottom. Something else that's very interesting is that it lines up really well with this blue line. Now, this blue line is a moving average. If I open up my moving average tool, I can see that the blue is my 300 day. 300 day moving average seems to have been the support here. It lines up just about with this line. Now I can adjust my chart to really make the puzzle pieces fit together. Um, it's probably something more like this for the neckline. And now if I measure that, let's see if that lines up with the 50 day moving average. So we're taking this down to the halfway point. Oh, actually it went lower. Hold on. <laughs> Um, I'm going to line it up to this point. This is the optimistic. Uh, whoa, holy smokes. This is the optimistic approach. So I'm going to take the height down to the neckline and then add that and see if that lines up. Eh, it's just a bit lower, actually, or a bit higher. Um, so at any rate, it looks like I nailed it on the first one. Um, as always, when you're drawing on your charts, try different points check out the different levels um don't be satisfied with your first impression if you think it fits um right away if it clicks for you uh, tr try out different things see if the levels that you're finding are lining up with other indicators such as uh your moving averages um so at any rate that's bitcoin i'll show you re really quick qqq just for another reversal type So QQQ, if we go back in time a little bit, and I haven't really done this, but let me tr let me see if I can do this thing here. Go back in time. Go back in time now. Oh, yeah, this is how we do it. I think this is how you do it. I think you go like that. Boom. Okay, so we've we've gone back in time with QQQ. And what when is this? This is February, March. Okay. Let's go back in time just a little bit more, actually. Let's go back in time just a little bit more. Replay. I want to go back to right here. Yeah. Okay. So you're trading QQQ, which is the, the NASDAQ ETF, or you're trading tech stocks in general, um, which are predominantly your growth stocks, your really big uh, high flyers where we expect big explosive revenue growth. Um, this is uh, uh, a lot of the stocks that are in your ARK ETFs. You know, it's summer 2020. You're, you're following Kathy Wood's ARK, ARK ETFs. Um, and, and they're just massive returns, massive returns. We're in a, a growth cycle and it's incredible. And then you start to look at QQQ and notice we hit an impulsive move that got rejected pretty hard and brought us down to lows, very similar to where we were before. We spiked up again, and you're hoping for another impulsive move up here, but you don't get it. You get a lower one. Um, so what this starts to look like is a classic reversal that everyone kind of, it's easy to remember the name because it's very, um, it implies imagery, um, which is a head and shoulders. So here... You've got a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder. Um, so you get a pattern like this. We're following this last big push um, uh, from the bulls. Profit is taken, and we're not getting that high again. We, we're not valuing it this, this high. In fact, probably a lot of bull market participants are leaving um, this space altogether. Um, so we recognize this as a head and shoulders pattern. And we do the same thing as before. We say, all right, this looks like a head and shoulders. Let's identify the pattern. So let me delete all my stuff. Blop. Let's get um, our polyline tool in here. It's probably this one. Yeah. So what we can do is something like this. Probably go even lower.
that's kind of your head and shoulders pattern right there. Um, and I've established somewhat of a neckline here um, in that. It looks like a mountain, whatever you want to call it, like a crown, but it's, it's a top. Um, so then what we do is measure from um, the, the highest point to that neckline and then add that to the neckline. And let's just go ahead and uh, replay what happened. So that work if I hit play? There we go. Um, so we can see that as the days go on, we start heading toward um, that resolution. Hitting some resistance here on the, uh, I think I believe that's a 50 day moving average. Some sideways action. You know what? Actually, hold on. Let's do this a little bit higher. Let's do this from this neckline. And measure it like this. Add that down. Hmm. It's like it doesn't quite want to do that. Um, but at any rate, that's how you recognize a reversal. That's a, a head and shoulders at the top. Um, all right. So, guys, thanks for tuning in for Get Technical. Um, are, are these power hours still going? I just rated it and turned them off. So, <laughs> okay. Um, hey, guys, how's, how's everyone everyone doing today? Uh, BTC uh, capitulation in play. Um, yeah, we just kind of talked about that. I, th I think that it, th it's gotten as low as it should be going. Uh, to resolve the top. Um, but of course, you want to see that bounce. I want to see a solid day candle bounce before I uh, re enter on Bitcoin. So you're not trying to catch the bottom here. You're waiting to see a, a, a reversal, some some sign of strength. Yeah, I, I want to catch the bottom, but I want to. I, I, you don't know where the bottom is until it starts going the other direction, right? That's what got me into trouble last night. I was like, no way Ethereum or Bitcoin's dropping any further. Bought some, woke up. It had dropped another 20%, but we did have that leg up kind of this morning. So wait, where, where would this have been? Where, are you on the daily chart right here? No, yeah, it's a daily. So if you switch to four hour, you can kind of see it. So if you go back to last night around like midnight. Uh, all right. So what, what's the day today? It's the day, um, Today's the 18th, 19th. 19th, 19th. So. It's right about here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Bought it and then... Well, I was on Ethereum, not Bitcoin, but it, they're pretty uh -huh. correlated. Yeah, but it's way sharper here. I mean, this is one where someone... Like, you could look at this and, and just treat it like a rounding top. Or you can do the head and shoulders thing with, like, a slanting neckline. Um, but definitely a reversal. Um, it does look like, so this is what I was talking about where you want to find some kind of bounces is the four hour. Um, so on the four hour, it's hitting the, what is blue again? Is that a, a 300? Yeah, it's hitting the the three the 300 um, candle moving average um, and bouncing right back up into the neckline that I drew on Ethereum. We look at this on the daily. Um yeah, a little bit less clear on the daily. Uh, but the four hours super clean, super duper clean. Yeah, I would say. I mean, you want it to break back above this uh, this level. Um, this was a little bit higher here. This was resistance like for a couple in a row. Um, so we're gonna want to break above that. Um, but then I'm I'm still not sure um, if we're gonna see a continued retracement of these levels but i mean ethereum cryptocurrency is so volatile i mean for it, for it to whip back up like that as long as it resolved the overall pattern that could be the case and it could just keep going from here i, I don't know about you but i like ethereum at this point more than bitcoin right now I, I yeah i would just go with whatever is moving the way i want it to um I mean, like, uh, fundamentally, a lot of people... I mean, the case can be made that Ethereum is a better platform, as promised. 
um, for a lot of uh, applications to, to be built on. Um, and we're starting to see that with NFTs, but NFTs went like this. Hype! Nah. And they're probably going to do the same thing that Bitcoin did over a period of time. We find a use for them, and then they're going to go like this. Um, so we might be entering a cycle where there's um, some dissipated interest in the Ethereum for a platform. Uh, am I frozen? I am certainly frozen. Um, yeah, we, uh... There we go. Um... <laughs> now you're just a, bl a black screen. This is the weird song. Yeah, so a big a big problem with Ethereum too is that anything that you do on the platform has high fees, like super high fees, and it takes a long time if you don't want to pay them. And sometimes nothing happens and you just lost money on it, essentially. Um, so we shall see. That's a big, uh, a big up or opportunity for Cardano. Wait, chat. Can you guys see Neil right now, or is it just me? No, 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 no one can see me. All right, wait uh, here. I'll pull up my chart real quick. Do you want to hop out and hop back in? Uh, yeah. Let me get my screen pulled up. What is up, y'all? Oh, I still got. All right, what should we look at? Pull up. I right, let's pull up Holly Frontier. Had a, has had a terrible day so far, but look, we're starting to get a leg back up. Started to think Chris Capri might have been right on this, being bearish this week. He, uh, you know what? Now I know. When Chris Capri gives me some advice, got to listen to Chris. Man knows what he's doing. Um, if you're, you know, a fan of Get Technical and you've been on, you know that we have Chris on every Monday. He knows what he's talking about this past Monday. He was talking about the option orders of this stock, saying there was more um, bearish puts than bullish calls. And we can see that right here. Um, looking HFC. at this, let's go. I was I was just telling the the crowd that I'm starting to think Chris Capri might have been right on this being bearish in the short term, and uh, he's a smart guy. So now I know. Got to listen to Chris. Should have gotten out when he told me to, and then bought back in right here. But uh, just wanted to give you all an update on that. Um, yeah, let's hit let's hit some of our sec our value sectors. So um, ET was just brought up, energy transfer. Um, so I mean, yeah, HFC is doing the same thing that XLE is doing. All right, so ET. Oh, here, let me fix my chart on that. Here, let's just switch it up. Um, I think we should we should go back through metal, oil, um, and all of those sectors to see how they're doing. Um, yeah, and gold is doing really well. Um, Zilcho, yeah, let's let's hit X as well. Um, so typically we start on the sectors and then start looking for stocks within them. Um, but we end up getting so hung up on the sectors we never get to the stocks. Um, so we'll hit energy transfer first. You're welcome, Yogi. Um, I'm sure this will also make uh, a couple other people in chat happy because um, this one has been a topic. I'm going to delete all of my drawings. Um, my moving averages, I'm also going to turn off because none of them are touching it right now. Um, I'm going to look at this from a weekly perspective. RSI and key levels are the first thing I'm going to look at on the weekly here. Um, and we can see that we've we had one, two, three three great weeks and one pretty damn good week so four a four week run um coming out of a cup without handle here um so so great there um it did get us into overbought territory if you can see here on rsi for et energy transfer um so no su surprise here that we're gonna blow off a little bit of steam and it's so funny that it always happens at key levels here um, so we can see that we're starting to get to, to the previous high, March 20th. Um, I'm going to do something a little funky and turn on the 500-day moving average. I'm going to beat 13 to the punch on this um, and remove. This is the 500-week moving average um, because I have weekly candles up. And I'm going to remove the line that I've drawn and check it out, guys. Um, so the 500-week moving average is our resistance uh, for energy transfer. 
So pull that up on your chart if you're in energy transfer or if you're interested in it. Um, I'll make this line thicker. Um, do I still have playback on? Let me delete that. Do, 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 do. Yes, this thing. There we go. There you go. All right, so the blue line, that is the 500. Does it look funny? Look wonky? I think it looks all right to me. Okay. Um, so that's going to be your line. You're, you're just wanna, gonna want to see a break through the 500 day moving average on high volume. Um, however, this is a perfect time for this stock to consolidate a little bit, maybe a little bit down, maybe a little bit sideways um, because we are on the weekly chart again and the RSI is pretty damn overbought, more overbought than it has been uh, for years, since 14, since 2014. Um, um, which isn't to say that it won't get through. It just means watch it, watch it. And then if we switch to the daily, let's see if there's anything different. Um, yeah, that week, the 500 week moving average is very nice there. Um, so there's a little multi time frame analysis for you and the importance of starting with larger time frames and then getting down to your smaller time frames. Um, so that's that's energy transfer. Um, energy transfer also um, pretty severely overbought. Um, all the way up to 81 here um, on the daily. The last time it got this high was in 16. 16 when we were coming out of a big V for Vendetta dip. Um, and then we did get that sort of downward consolidation followed by a dip. So we got our, our little uh, um, uh, corrective phase. Then we got a pretty severe dip and then a nice ride back up. Um, so watch it. Don't lose your shirt. Keep your stops tight on this one i think um this looks like to me the the uh checkpoint in a very awesome run for this one um okay so uh, yeah so like really what you're looking for with this is you've got a pole now you need some kind of flag right you need a pennant or a, a flag or something like that to time another entry um okay so that's energy transfer let's keep it to value i'll hit x which is steel so we got energy transfer that's going to be from our energy space um and this one's not going to be too dissimilar to xle right here's xle um also getting up into this resistance a little bit of uh overboughtness but uh down some downward momentum here now let's look at x united states steel corp a sweetheart of the show um, looking at the monthly, let's start off with the monthly and you can see this beast of a month that we had in March. Incredible. Um, X up 63 gosh, darn percent smash the like for X. Give me a one in chat. If you have been trading X, let me get that one. I know a few of you have for sure, for sure. X going to give it to you. That's right. And it did. Insane. Insane. Big shout out um, to Miles and some of the others in chat. Um, uh, uh, Michael, um, that have been absolute metal bugs, steel bugs, um, because dang, um, you guys had very good reason to be liking this stock. Um, when we go down to the weekly, uh, I still got the 500 here. Let's turn on our other moving averages. Um, not a lot of help offered by them on the weekly chart. We're going to stick to what we have. Um, and you can see that we, we had a pretty healthy alternation between green and red. Two down weeks in a row creating an, uh, a corrective phase here on the weekly. Um, let's see if we can't get a little bit of a support line drawn here so i'm gonna go to the lowest low here on this weekly candle and um, then bring that to the next swing low which is the low on this green candle um that's just a quick dirty way of doing it i could also take this and adjust it to the low when we were coming out of the rounding bottom get something more like this um, which i'm not too mad at um, one thing that i want to do before I rigidly adhere to a trend line, a, a, a line of sloping support that I've just drawn based on swing lows, is pull out the good old Bollinger Bands, which yes, work on the weekly charts. 
Um, Bollinger Bands, as you all know, um, are simply this red line, which is the 20 period simple moving average and a blue line that is one standard deviation above it and a blue line that is one standard deviation below it. This is a great way to lock in the bounds of your trends as they go up um, and time entries for stocks that are clearly in trends, which this one is. This is clearly an uptrend. Um, and we can very clearly see um, on the weekly um, that we've been sort of gliding around this mean, this red line, dipping past it, riding it, and then busting up above it. On the daily, this will be a lot more clear and actionable. So I've switched to the daily with the Bollinger Bands, and then you can really see how uh, uh, bouncing. We got red a red candle here hitting the mean on X back in November. Bouncing off of this is a great buy signal to stay in, stay in, stay in. Um, and then once you start approaching the mean again, consider going short. Consider going short, crossing the mean, consider continuing going short and then targeting the low. But then as we see that we're crossing the mean again, start targeting the upper standard deviation, go long and X like the Bollinger Band rules. It's, just, it's a cheat code on trading. Um, so looking at X on the, I want to go back to the weekly really quick, just to look at RSI. Are we exhausted on the RSI? RSI? No, we are not. We do have some downward momentum, but that's to be expected because we've had some middling days here. Um, but this RSI likes to get up to 80. Likes to get up to 80, guys. So uh, when you start to get above the traditional 70 line on your RSI on X, don't get too freaked out. As long as the rest of, of things like moving average and, and the price structure itself, the price patterns um, are telling you that you have room to go. Um, now, looking at this thing, the number one thesis behind this is that we're resolving a rounding bottom. We started off the show talking about rounding tops. The great thing about those is that they work the other way too. Um, so very perfectly succinctly. I feel like every time you guys bring these up, um, 50 moving average on X is a bounce zone. I'm going to turn that on. Um, absolutely it is. Um, uh, so just brought up here in chat, shout out to Stacy. Thank you, Stacy. Um, the 50 day moving average is the bounce is, is a great, I mean, this is a buy signal at least at the very least, um, since March 25th of this year. Um, killer. Great, great find Stacy. Um, moving averages, um, very important to find. Uh, the moving averages that have a strong, respectful relationship with your stocks. Um, so we can see here with X that I feel it's weird. It's like uncanny. Every time you guys tell me to look at a stock, it's almost always at like the key point. So maybe that's why you want it on the show. Um, so uh, right now with X, we are at this final uh, uh, swing up, swing high before we started this broad base rounding bottom. Um, so we're doing what rounding bottoms tend to always do in my opinion um which is and this is our our neckline they like to break above the neckline touch the neckline and then bounce before the real breakout happens rounding bottoms aren't always like this most of the time they're like this right um, so I think the stock is still in play. I think the space is still in play um, because the chart's telling me it is. The chart's not telling me otherwise, guys. Um, we're not tremendously overbought here on, on the daily. We've got plenty of room to breathe. Um, as as previously shown by Stacy, the 50-day moving average, so on your day chart with the 50-day simple moving average pulled up, that is a buy signal. Um, and we've hit that. Um, today that was has been our low today just about touching it just giving a little little kiss um on a gap down and now i'm looking at this like hey we got a gap to fill and we've got another impulsive move uh to make on our way up for full resolution of our rounding bottom which just as a reminder if i delete all of our drawings here whoops um and i draw our neckline let's go ahead and just quickly draw in a neckline here um, and then measure the base of our rounding bottom up to that neckline, we find our price target for this big broad pattern by adding this price difference to the neckline, giving us a price target of just about 
this previous high, this range of previous highs at about 44 bucks. Um, so still a long way to go. If we measure the potential gain here, yes, it's going to ziggy zag the way up there. We might get some monster candles. Um, but if we measure the profit potential from where we are today, um, that's going to be about 80%. It's not going to happen all at once, guys, but it's reliable and you can watch it. That's the difference. This isn't watching a $1 stock for a pharmaceutical company that your buddy that works at Arby's told you about. Um, this is watching a stock that has a lot of eyeballs on it, a lot of market participants, um, and therefore is easier for us as technical analysts to trade based on the, the tools that we have. Um, at our disposal at our disposal it's not going to be like um as wild and unpredictable um so that's why we like it um we like easy money easy money not gambling money um there's a degree of certainty um in in these uncertain times to be completely frank with you um so you, there you go that's x i'm bullish x been bullish x love the stock big shout out to the dog with the toupee fellow illuminati member um uh for pointing this one out and being on it um yes you can also check out see i laugh i'm sure that one's looking good but we have a guest today we've got a guest today um uh, we've got mr tom thornton here who is a fantastic chartist if you don't know him you're about to meet him if you already know him you know you're in for a treat um so producer ab can we please bring on our our guest yes sir hey, hey guys how are you good how are you man I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it is our pleasure. Um, I hear nothing about good things, or nothing but good things. <laughs> How about <laughs> you, Tom? Um, so I was wondering if, uh, for folks that aren't familiar with you, if you could give yourself a, a brief introduction. Okay, I, uh, I'm i the founder of Hedge Fund Telemetry. Uh, my site focuses and my work focuses on market sentiment as well, uh, technicals, I am probably one of the better well-known DeMarc analysts out there. I also use Erlanger and several other, you know, more common technical analysis uh, tools that uh, most people know. But I, I look at short interest through Erlanger, um, a bunch of different momentum uh, indicators. And I'm a really big fan of looking at market internals historically because I feel like you can look at something, well, when it was up here, Guess what happened? It went back down here. So I, I have some some internals that I, I look at. I've looked at for a long time that I can show you guys today as well. It's really a big day because this crypto crash, I mean, it's just carnage out there. And I, I, I who knew? Who knew? But it was very speculative out there. Um. <laughs> Producer AB, can you just play with a Rubik's Cube for like five minutes? <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Cool. So we're uh, that, that's great. Um, and it is absolute carnage out there. We started the show talking about um, the top on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, and, and folks that were watching probably also saw my watch list. I keep a watch list, Tom, of um, all of the cryptocurrencies that are traded on the major crypto exchanges. So Kraken, Binance, um, Gemini. Um, uh, and it's just red across the board. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, so B Bitcoin, as always, has proven itself to be a leading indicator, leading indicator for trend direction with um, these other assets. Um, uh, Tom, can you uh, take us through what you were mentioning you'd like to show us? I'd love if you could share your screen. Okay. Uh, I, I'm awful it, with technology, so, you know, give me all that. good. It's just like Zoom. Um, so on the I bottom, three, I have three screens. I'm just wondering which one's going to do it. Um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I feel like two's hot today. Feeling two. Let's say I'd like to roll a two. Oh, so I see here. Here we go. Okay. This is it. Screen one. Okay. Uh, and what are you seeing on my screen right now? Uh, wait, where is it? Tom Thor. Oh, I see. We see it. Oh, infinity. All right, I'm, just gonna, of infinity. I'm, I'm just going to drop this down and this is my main Bloomberg. Uh, but I, I, I pulled some um, interesting things that I, I think make a lot of sense right now. Um, this is the S and P 500. And this basically what has happened is 
we've had um, this. Can you see my cursor? Yeah. Can you give that? Can you give us a zoom on that image? Yeah, I can. I can. Try maybe perhaps like yeah. That's that's probably okay. Probably gonna work. <sighs> this is the S and P five hundred. Um, you know, one of the things with the DeMarc signals is you can get these these strong trends that will just basically overrun the exhaustion 13s. Um, there's two significant numbers that DeMarc has. Uh, nines, those are called setup nines. Uh, then there's the 13s. And the purple one is a combo. This amber one, which I coded amber, is the aggressive. And the red is the well more well-known sequential. So we actually were left pending here on day 12. Can you zoom in like a, a couple more ticks? You want to go up a little bit bigger? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, okay. and then you can just kind of drag it around. Drag it around. Okay. So we we basically, to get a 13, you need to close above the eighth red bar here. So we did not get that. Uh, however, on the S&P futures, we did get that. So sometimes the cash in the futures is off a little. But what I think is interesting today is we, we, we're we testing the 50-day here, and we went to the 20-day, and now here we are back at the uh, 50 day and it's uh, a little precarious. I would say it's it's off the lows the data that I look at also shows a lot of Selling in single names and people are buying index and I don't think that's a very strong bid And I wouldn't be shocked to see uh, a pullback uh, Somewhere uh, later today. I think it's just it's a false bid. You also have a lot of people that are covering and when you have this type of covering, any more downside, uh, you'll see less of a, a strong bid with the, the lack of shorts. So one other thing that let's just, I wanna get going through these as fast as I can for you. This is the S&P uh, sentiment that I look at. And, and I think you can see it here. This is the S&P, this is the market sentiment. I use, uh, uh, Jake Bernstein's DSI Daily Sentiment Index. I chart it on our site, mm -hmm. and as you see, uh, sentiment has been very, very strong. And sentiment is a condition, and what you really needed to see was a trigger to turn it lower. And this is from yesterday, so it's a, uh, it's a little behind. It'll probably be down uh, again. The main thing that I would be watching right now is a break of the market sentiment at 50%. If we break through that, I think that's when the majority of people turn bearish. Uh, some internals that I look at, and this is um, this is an oldie but goodie. This is the SPY versus VIX. And I've had this, and I when I worked at my hedge mm. fund, I developed this, um, I, and it's been on stockcharts.com uh, forever. But basically, it's been this trend line where you get to this, you know, peak up here. You know, even with the coronavirus peak up here, we didn't really, we didn't really get a new high, uh, a dramatic high. Uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden, coronavirus hit. But what I was looking at is I, I look at a MACD, a single line MACD, a 13.341 MACD down here on this indicator, this ratio. And as you see, it was very, very high up here. And I was very nervous about the markets um, with these, you know, this was basically as high as it gets. And then, bam, we got killed. We went to a the ridiculously oversold zone, which I, I should patent that. But as it turned <laughs> up, uh, then that was a really strong buy signal. And now we went to even higher than before, and it's starting to reverse down. Now, this is a weekly, so it's already started. So that's something to keep an eye on. Another one that I think is really good is the NASDAQ summation index. And let me blow this guy up. Yeah, I this really don't want to zoom in on this one. Yeah, so this is a weekly. And I'm going to move it down here. So it's a, it's a running total of the McClellan, McClellan oscillator values. Um, so it's a net advances. Um, um, minus declining issues. And this is actually a very good, and you can, anyone can do this in stockcharts.com. Uh, and I, I look at it on a weekly basis. So it's an early indicator, sort of a canary in the coal mine type indicator. And this goes back, this is um, towards the beginning of the year. This, um, these weekly bars, it hit the highest level ever. And this was in January. And as you know, everything was just going 
nuts on the upside. And then all of a sudden it started to fade. And the NASDAQ, uh, a lot of the big cap names have not made new highs since February. And a lot of the indices have been going sideways in a choppy, messy pattern. Uh, it's hard to get a little momentum here. But what I see now is that we're below zero. And when we've dropped below zero, we might have a waterfall type event. We had this back here in uh, Q4 of 18. Uh, I think we had something like this uh, 16. That was a really, February 16, that was a really good buy uh, uh, point there as well. But this is not oversold. And I use these momentum indicators. And this is the faster one, fast, a little less fast RSI. It's getting oversold. It can get deeply oversold. And this is the MACD. So this is starting to uh, give us some uh, concerns. So uh, let's uh, let's go through. So I did the S and P. Here's a um, this is the triple Q's. Let me pull this guy over. And and this is absolutely um, a chart that I I look at every day. And these are you know I have Demarc indicators that just have the 13s and nines. And this is a 60 can you, minute can you time zoom frame. In, in again, Tom. What's that? Can you oh, zoom in a couple times? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. I can see it. Let's get it. So I, I look at this and, and basically when a 13 occurs, uh, something should happen like a stalling out pattern or some sort of reversal. And after a 13, uh, you generally, the rule of thumb is within 10 to 12 bars later, uh, you'll see a reversal. And you don't need necessarily to have you know a 1987 uh, waterfall drop, but you get sometimes you know, for a day trader, this stalled out the pattern here, this reversed the pattern here, good reversal here, it reversed. Uh, and now we had one uh, earlier today on the cues at the lows. And it, it's interesting, it held this, um, this level here. And I really think that if we break this level uh, in the next few days, I think we're gonna have a, a much deeper type of, um, type of event. And, and that I think is gonna be something to watch. Uh, okay, I'm just going to shift gears a little bit. Tesla. I'm a big really fan. quick, really quick, yeah. for that last one, what yeah. what time increments did you have on your chart? 60 minute. So I, I, I tend to, you know, everybody has their own time period that they like to watch and what makes sense for them trading wise. And I know people that trade one minute charts with DeMarc indicators. Uh, Tom DeMarc does actually. And I like 60 minutes. It works in my time, you know, my risk uh, parameters. And I feel like I'm not going to get whipped out of something too quick. And, and, and it works. And also in here, you can see there are, there are uh, Elliott waves, which this is actually the DeMarc wave system, the TD wave. And I, I really like it a lot. So one thing you can see, we had the fifth wave up here and we had the first wave here, lower high two, three, and then this is a four here, and then fought the fifth wave. So, if we this is a first wave up, this is this made a higher uh, higher low wave two. If it breaks it, it's going to revert back to wave five. So that's something that I, I I show a lot, and it's different from Elliott the strict Elliott wave because it's based more it's based on a number of bars. So you have to have eight for the make the wave two after wave one. You have to have an eight day closing high. And then wave four, you have to have a 14, 14 bar, 13 bar, 14 bar, sorry, uh, closing high. And that's that's how that works. And and for anybody that's really interested in learning more about DeMarc stuff at our site, Hedge Fund Telemetry, uh, we do offer some tools. Uh, just but you got to email me and I'll send you uh, some, some primers on DeMarc as well. We also offer a book from... Uh, my friend Jason, who uh, Jason Pearl at UBS, who wrote a great book on the market that you can actually understand. Okay, so Tesla. Let's go back to this one. This one's so fun. Oh God, this has been a wild one. So Tesla daily. Um, it see sometimes these uh, Demarc indicators stall out really briefly. This was you know a 13s here stalled. These didn't work, but within the allotted time it started to top out here and the nines are a, a more short-term indicator 
Um, and after a nine, you get the red sequential. And basically, we've had a 13 here, but when you have two nines, like we have here, we have a new sequential starting up, and it's on day four of 13. And I ran this, it's, we're down 38% basically uh, from the highs in Tesla. And I, I do think we're gonna go lower. Actually, I'll show you just a live one that this is, this is the weekly with Tesla. And I, I think this is going to 400 here. Can you, can you, can you see it here? Uh, it's, it's really, yeah, if you could give it another yeah, let me, idea. Let me zoom. This is where the um, it started. This this is what's known as a TDST, a, a trend line uh, from the start of a move, and this is when they were added to or announced that they were added to the S and P. I think um, they were added somewhere in here. But bottom line is uh, we're starting to break down, and this would be a closing weekly low, uh, going back to December. And you know what happens is you have so much overhead resistance that a lot of people that got suckered into buying it up here or here, uh, bought the dip here and, and, and they're now underwater. So the pressure as stocks, as, as things go lower, you're gonna have more motivation for the, the bears or for people to sell. They just get tired of it. They don't wanna look at it and they're, they get afraid, but I think it's gonna go to 400. That's, that's my, that's my uh, expectation. So, uh, what do I like? Oh, actually, here's one. This is a good one for you. I look at everything, by the way. Commodities, everybody loved commodities. Um, this is corn. This is the corn ETF. It's the exact same thing for the uh, corn futures. But we had upside exhaustion signals here, and then we rolled over, and it's down from 22 and a half down to 1966. So that worked. Now on this 13, we had a little bit of a pullback, but it stalled out. And that's that what that's kind of what exhaustion signals do. They don't necessarily have to reverse down and and give you some giant uh, sell-off, but it could just stop the the progress moving forward. So that's corn. Uh, one other thing that I look at is corn market sentiment. And as you see here, ignore this little dip here, but the corn sentiment was up in the 90% level, and that's ex that's exceptionally overbought. And what we needed on this corn here, uh, what we needed was a trigger, and I use the, the DeMarc indicators as a trigger for uh, a reversal. And you know, just keep in mind, you know, market sentiment can stay high; it's a condition. Uh, you need a trigger. It can also stay low as well. It, sometimes I use a 20-day moving average. Uh, for just a good trend direction. And for me, that's a good timeline that uh, time frame that works for me in the way I trade. Let's go to, I got more, I got more. Okay, this is, this is gonna be a little bit of a controversy because everybody thinks that, hey, what happened there? We had two? <laughs> okay, this is uh, the US dollar. I don't know what, popped up over there, but regardless, as you see, uh, we had some 13s down here and we had a sequential move up here. And at the top here, you had some countdown 13 sell signals um, on this bounce. And now we're, we've moved down and now we're getting more countdown 13 sell signals. Now, one, one thing that I will tell you that it's a little rule that I like to follow uh, because you can actually buy the 13s but I like to see a four day either closing low like this uh, or a closing high like this mm. to give me a uh, conviction that there is a trend change that's gonna, that's gonna follow. So that's um, something to keep an eye on. Everybody and their mother thinks the dollar is going lower and lower and lower and it may over a certain time frame. but I think right now, uh, I think you're gonna see a reversal in this. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting also, and not everything is so technical, but this is, I look at um, factors in the market. And this is a monitor that I've used for a long time. And th this is, you know, top hedge fund holdings, the Qs, S&P growth, momentum, defensives, quali uh, quality, um, short, high short interest and things like that. 
Uh, but basically, we have a mostly red day. And interesting enough is the five-day rolling period is mostly green. So we've had a very, you know, strong few days uh, with those bounces. But the one month is now down. The one month rolling, you're starting to see weakness. And mm -hmm. as you see, four, seven, six, four, seven, these are all down the hardest. And those are the ones that are relatively outperforming today. Momentum um, is down 49 bips, and but it's been down the worst. So we're seeing a bit of a rotation into some of the stuff that's been lagging, uh, the Qs and you know, top hedge fund holdings. You can guess what those are. Those are the um, the typical um, Apple, Google, mm -hmm. Amazon. So those are interesting. Okay, now this is kind of a funny one. Uh, oops. Uh, Bloomberg doesn't have a Dogecoin symbol that is live, but they have one that is in the day. This is, what, this is what we saw last week. Uh, I mean, th this is not a chart that anyone can really say this is a chart to follow. But we did get a DeMarc um, combo sell, sell signal up here on the top week, which was kind of funny. It was right before Elon went on SNL. So let's look. <laughs> do, do we, we didn't go through uh, Bitcoin yet, did we? No, not, not in your okay. trace, though. I'm saving the best for last. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. I don't even know how much time I have on here. Am I, I'm... Uh, you got about two minutes. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm having fun. I like, you know, talking charts. Okay, so one one thing, again, like Tesla, you have, you've had, you know, a lot of people that got in in January and February and March, or excuse me, April here at these highs, and they really haven't seen much progress. And I would uh, attribute that to perhaps other coins. Ethereum was very hot until it wasn't recently. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people you know, just would, would chase what was working. And so one thing that's interesting here is we had some 13s here. We had a 13 here. The 13 here was a little premature and we were in the fifth wave up. And now this, this one was good because we had a nine, this is a buy setup nine with DeMarc. And this is a, a support line, which is called TDST. And so we kind of figured it would bounce but what's happened is, and this is happening a lot in the entire market, because my my call right now is we're going to be, we will be making lower high bounces and then lower lows. So this is a wave two. So wave one, that yellow one, wave two, lower high bounce, and this number here, thirty eight five sixty two, was the wave three price objective, and we would that would have basically qualified once we broke the closing low here, this one. So we knew that this was in a, a, a precarious position. Uh, it broke this support level and it has a downside red sequential countdown. Uh, and I grabbed this uh, just a little while ago and it's on day eight of 13. So the bottom line is I think this will uh, continue to get to the 13 and it could, it may not, it doesn't necessarily have to make a new low, but it could chop around in here and it, the eighth bar, the, excuse me, the 13th bar has to close under wherever it closes today because today is the eighth bar. And it's interesting because we have some of the DeMarc Fibonacci tra retracements here. This is a, it, it's kind of, um, it has two different things on here, but it's a 38 and this is the, the 50 and the 60 or 61.8 is, is uh, a bit lower. I don't, don't have it here. But that that right there is, is kind of how I'm seeing things. Uh, one other thing that I'll just kind of go with this. I think it's it's interesting. I do. I do think it's interesting. <laughs> I'm sure we agree. We got we've got about 20 seconds left. Okay. So basically I screen every day on hedge fund telemetry um, the 13s on uh, with DeMarc within the S P and we're starting to see some buy signals show up. Disney is one that I, I like um, and I want to buy uh, in the next couple of days. I'm long Walmart and it's almost the 13, so I'll probably sell it on the 13. But what's interesting is we're seeing a lot of weeklies. 
These are weekly sell signals. And that to me is a more precarious uh, situation for a longer period top. And that, that I think is um, the, the gist of it. I think this, this period that we're going through is probably gonna last a little longer. It may be a little bit more punishing for people. Uh, so I think right now you, you just have to um, you just have to be rather cautious um, and, and safe as far as uh, the way this market's trading. And, and you don't need to be a hero. I mean, Bitcoin's you know had a huge run off the low, but again, a lot of people are probably covered. There's less shorts in there, and you you probably have faster money that bought into this. And any sign of a down move, we're going to probably see um, you know maybe new lows. Well, there you have it, Mr. Stone. Right. Thank you very much for being with us today. Mike. All right. Awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. Take care. Take care. Um, all right, guys. Um, that is just about all that we have time for. Oh, I didn't do the thing. I didn't get the thing ready. Hold on one sec. It doesn't feel right without the thing. Um, all right, guys. Um, theme of the day reversals happen um if you go back to the beginning of the episode we touched on that with bitcoin um in qqq um and as pointed out on the hourly chart for qqq it's got a little bit of a rounding situation i have disney open right here um he was you know, a little uh, bullish on the disney um but again to me it looks like a like a top here i've got my my area of support um, drawn and it's lining up perfectly with pivot points. So remember how cool pivot points are on your charts. Um, so at any rate, um, that was Tommy Thornton. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. Check out his website. Check out everything the guy's doing because he's doing a lot. You see the guy's charts? Insane. Um, so this has been the Wednesday edition of Get Technical with me as always has been producer Aaron Bree. Don't forget to smash that like button in the face. And subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the little bell. What do we got up next, Aaron Bree? We've got Moon or Bust. We're talking cryptos. We're talking altcoins with my man, Logan, Ryan, Brian, and Rohan. I see Rohan lurking there in the background. What up, Brohan? <laughs> so, thanks, guys. I'm Neil Hamilton. This has been Get Technical. Happy trading. See you Friday, not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys.